Yo, hello and welcome back to yet another character study. This one will once again build off of the last episodes, but don't worry, this one won't be as dense as the last one, I promise. Also, as I don't really want to force you into watching multiple videos before this one, let's do a real quick recap. This sheet, what you're looking at right now, tries to list each and every tier 1 unit in the game and shows how many stats it actually brings onto the table. To get some values down, we had to take shortcuts here and there, unfortunately, like with the horse and pig, for example. Uh, that's why both of these have their own respective videos. Those videos are, by the way, extremely good, so I invite you to check them out after this one anyway. <laughs> so the comparable figure in this sheet are the overall stats, attack and HP combined. These also include the value of the respective effects of an animal too. So the end is a 2-1 for example, and buzz 4 plus 2 plus 1 on death as well, resulting in 6 stats. Yo, as I promised, this recap was pretty quick. Now for this character starter, we are going to take a look at the beaver first. There already is a value on it actually, but to be honest, I'm not happy with it. Six overall sets actually imply that the beaver is as good as the ant. And if you actually played a round of Super Auto Pets in your life, you know that's just wrong. So I guess we have to do some correction to our sheet, don't we? In my eyes, there are two things wrong with it. Let's talk first about values per turn. Real Total Frog fans know that we measured the pig according to this rule. Well, fake Total Frog fans turned the shit off already. So this sheet is a representation of a unit's value per turn. So the plus zero plus two buff of the beaver can be kept here as is if we buy and sell it in the same turn. Which we actually sometimes do, yes, but if we do, his body actually doesn't have any impact on the game, right? Because he'll never fight. Okay, so let me phrase it differently. This sheet's result is value per unit per turn, right? If we buy a beaver this turn, having it fight around, and we would sell it in the next shop phase, his body will have played a role. But we had two shop phases, so his sell effect only is accounting for that turn where we sold him. As we had him two rounds effectively, his sell effect's value per turn is half of that. Again, remember that fighting once means we had him two turns as he has seen two shop phases. Okay, so now we said this overall sheet represents a value of a unit as if we buy it in the first round and most likely sell it in the third round, as this usually is a sweet spot for selling these tier 1 units usually. Look at Bluebird here. In the horse video we elaborated on that. Bluebird will provide one attack in the first round, which will stay forever on the board if we won't sell the buffed unit. In the second round the Bluebird will buff another time, so plus 2 attack overall, in the third plus 3 attack overall. Now the average for these 3 turns is obviously plus 2 attack, that's why we have a multiplier of 2 in the sheet. Now looking back at Beaver again, as his effect obviously happens only once and only on sale, we have to divide this effect value by the amount of turns we keep the beaver. How long do you keep a beaver in the first turns then? As you by the way don't play cycling yet as you only can start playing that later, we don't take that into account. So do you buy it in the first, keeping it over the second and sell it in the third? Well yes, yeah, sometimes I guess. Sometimes you pick it up in the second round and sell it in the third. And sometimes you pick it up in the first and sell it in the second round. Well, I think that last example is the least probable. So one improbable case of two turns, one probable case of two turns, and one probable case of three turns. Means on average maybe 2.4 turns? Okay, are you fine with that, guys? Okay, I don't hear no complaints, so let's use just that. Let's go into this real quick. Two stats of the beaver's effect divided by 2.4 equals 0.83. So let's say 0.8. Uh, by the way, calculating with so many decimals just fakes accuracy. I really don't like that. So let's always try to round whenever we can to one decimal place. Okay, what that means is that the beaver now has overall stats of 4.8. Okay, wow, it turns out the beaver is pretty bad, huh? Uh, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. I'm more happy with it now, though. Hope you are too, but actually we're not done yet. If we demolish beaver like that, we cannot spare any other units with similar effects, right? Let's do the same with fish. The effect of the fish is arguably also only triggerable once early. Same with beaver. As you can see, this is not accounted for yet. And also there's more broken with the fish, so let's do it all over again, just really quick. Okay, a fish is a 2-3. The effect, when triggered, will buff all friends plus one plus one. How many friends are that? 
What I oftentimes do is wait for the third round to combine fishes, so the effect hits targets which I'm more likely going to keep, rather than a stupid little mosquito which I only bought because there was a slot open in turn 2. So sometimes that third fish is already on the board, but not combined with the other fishes yet. Sometimes though, you are buying that third fish straight from the shop in the round where you upgrade your fish to level 2. So how often do these scenarios actually happen? My experience says like both scenarios are pretty much equal. Do you agree? Okay, again, no complaints. <laughs> so let's say 3.5 friends are targets for the fish's effect. Okay, now attention class, this bit is really important to understand. As you need three fishes to trigger this effect, each fish is accountable for one third of the effect. So to now close in on the correct multiplier we want per fish, or per single unit, 3.5 friends as effect targets divided by 3 fishes equals 1.17, so 1.2. One single fish will buff 1.2 times for plus 1 plus 1 when it actually gets leveled up. But actually how often is that though? So let me phrase it differently, if you buy a fish in turn 1, how likely is it to be a part of a level 2 fish at some point? 50% of the time? So 50% of the time the fish is just a 2-3 without effect, and the other 50% of the time the effect actually gets triggered? Yeah, I honestly think you combine a fish more often than not, right? So can we say 60? Is this a healthy estimate? Honestly, I'm really actually unsure of that. It's amazing how hard it is to guess stuff like that. It could be actually 40%, it could be actually 70, I really don't know. Teamwork Games, please release stats like this, please? Okay, now let's work with 60%. So our multiplier before was 1.2, right? 1.2 times 0.6 for a 60% likelihood of actually happening. So that's 0.72, so 0.7. Okay, whew, but wait. We still didn't account for the thing we corrected Beaver with, right? Okay, let's quickly do that. How long do you keep a fish in the first turns? Do you buy it in the first, keeping it over the second and sell it in the third? Well, yeah, pretty often, I guess. Sometimes you pick it up in the second and sell it in the third. Yeah, also not too rare. Uh, and sometimes you pick it up in the first and sell it in the second turn. Well, really not often, I think. So 2.6 turns on average, if we only look over the first three turns. Beaver had 2.4. I think you are more likely to keep a fish around than a beaver, right? Okay, let's stick with that. 0.7, our multiplier from a minute ago, divided by 2.6 is 0.27, so 0.3 and lol, that's a small multiplier, what the f- But yeah, as we corrected the other guys as well, I think we have now accounted for pretty much everything, right? Except that we are missing some of these guys. Okay, so one unit we still have to correct for now is the otter. Cause this effect also happens only once. Again, how long do you keep the otter? Honestly, not for that long as a fish or a beaver usually, but hold up, wait a minute. First, the plus one plus one is applied when you buy the unit and not on sell or level up as the other guys. So the plus one plus one is on the board the whole time. So that's not right. That multiplier needs to be one. And I'm gonna argue that the multiplier needs to be even higher. And with that, welcome to the second chapter of this. To dive into this, we need to understand the concept of tempo units. So in trading card games like Magic the Gathering or Hearthstone, basically three core deck concept types build the foundation. Control, which incorporates slow gameplay, much AoE damage to style out the game and huge dudes coming in late to win you the game. Midrange, which tries to bring huge dudes in as early as possible generally. A good representation for that would be the Druid from Hearthstone. Well, and Aggro. Aggro decks try to win really quick with generally small units which will attack often and early. Obviously, we could talk about that topic for literal hours, and this is just a real quick rundown of it. If you want to know more, my buddy Blueberry Piper is working on a video about animal archetypes and stuff like that, so check him out definitely if you want to deep dive more. Link to his channel is in the description. Okay, now tempo. Tempo is basically a subconcept of aggro, more or less. A unit being classified as a tempo unit basically means that it is pretty strong for the moment it can come in, but that its strength falls off quite fast. The opposite of the tempo unit, and now going back into the best game out there, is for example the caterpillar. You buy it and it's pretty bad at first. As soon as it's level 3 though, it's really strong. 
as it, it pretty much always the strongest unit on the board, as it copies the stats from the strongest unit. So, crazy powerful late, but the moment you pick it up, it's pretty bad. Same with the worm, by the way, too. So, a good tempo unit, for example, is the end. Its stats are pretty good, but they fall off pretty fast, as the later the game progresses, the stronger overall the units get. Well, this applies to every unit, basically, but what makes the end a tempo unit is the amount of stats. The buff of plus 2 plus 1 in the early turns is really strong, but it's basically nothing in turn 7 or so. This, by the way, is bad scaling. Good scaling is that the strength of a unit grows with the progress of the match. Usually, slow units like Caterpillar, Puppy, Bison are good scalers. Tempo units are bad scalers. And an even better example for the tempo unit is the Otter. <laughs> I'm such a genius at writing scripts, aren't I? <laughs> Look, it's even more tempo as the end. That plus one plus one is not on the unit itself, but gets applied to another unit, so it sticks around even after you sell the otter. So that's definitely worth something, right? That plus one plus one is oftentimes better kept on a 2-3 fish, which as a result is a 3-4, which pretty much always will trade 2 for 1 in the early turns. This plus one plus one is just more valuable on a different unit than on the otter itself, usually. Now looking back at our sheet, right now we still act like that plus one plus one is on the otter. How much more valuable is that buff now on a fish, for example? One and a half times? If there is an actual calculation for this, I don't see it honestly. If you know a way to calculate this, please let me know. So I would actually propose that the effect of the otter is worth 1.5 times its actual stats, cause that plus one plus one has tempo. Let's open up a new multiplier here for the sheet. So if we now look at every tier one unit, this speed multiplier for the effect of 1.5 is obviously only applicable for the otter, cause that's the only one who provides this tempo buff at the beginning of its life cycle. As units like Ant provide their buff once each turn, they get a speed multiplier of 1, so their value won't change. But animals like Beaver provide their buff at the end of their life cycle. So in my books, this needs to be accounted for as well, right? How about a speed multiplier of 0.5? Okay, applying this now to the duck, fish, and pig as well, this sheet now looks pretty alright, doesn't it? Except that it isn't, but honestly that's something for the next time, cause look at that runtime already. I could <laughs> talk about this for hours though, honestly. Well, thanks a lot for the positive feedback on the series so far, by the way. I really enjoy doing these videos and I actually don't plan on stopping. Honestly, tier one, as complicated as some episodes were up until this point, it's probably the easiest to pinpoint. The higher in tiers you go, the more complicated this all will get. But I think there's some form of correction still to be made for the tier one unit. So I'm really curious, what animal has deserved a character study in your opinion? Please let me know, and up until then, you can enjoy my end card. As always, if you like this video, never tell me or your friends, and also please never share this around. Also, please make sure to not like this video. If you want to see more content like this, definitely don't subscribe to my channel and never check out this video displayed over here. See you in the next video, I'm out.